Hi there, we are from Group C. We share to you about gestational diabetes. Do you know that a pregnant woman will have a chance to develop diabetes during their pregnancy? And that is called gestational diabetes. But before we look deeper into that, let's have a revision about pancreas. So this is pancreas. Pancreas is an organ that contains two types of glandular tissue, which is pancreatic acini and islet of Langerhans. The acini produce digestive system. The islet produce hormones. The pancreas secretes digestive enzyme into the duodenum and hormones into the bloodstream. The digestive Enzyme such as amylase, lipase, and tricin. These three are released from cell of the ACD and flow into the pancreatic duct. Now, what is gestational diabetes mellitus? It is also called gestational diabetes, a type of diabetes that is first seen in a pregnant woman who did not have diabetes before she was pregnant. Diabetes means your blood glucose is too high. Too much glucose in your blood is not good for you and your baby. Some women have more than one pregnancy affected by it. It usually shows up in the middle of pregnancy and doctors most often test for it between 24 and 28 weeks of pregnancy. If you develop gestational diabetes while you are pregnant, it doesn't mean that you had diabetes before your pregnancy or will have it after it. But gestational diabetes does raise your risk of developing type 2 diabetes in the future. Next. I will emphasize the differences between common diabetes and gestational diabetes. There are two types of diabetes mellitus which is type 1 and type 2. Type 1 diabetes is also called as insulin-dependent diabetes. It have begins in childhood. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition and it happens when your body attacks your pancreas with antibodies. The organ is damaged and doesn't need insulin. While type 2 diabetes is used to be called non-insulin-dependent. About 90% of people with diabetes have type 2. When you have type 2 diabetes, your pancreas usually creates some insulin, but either it's not enough or your body doesn't use it like it should. Insulin resistance usually happens in fat, liver, and muscle cells. Different from diabetes mellitus, gestational diabetes usually causes some form of insulin resistance. Normally, glucose from food moves from the gut into the blood. Then, insulin which is produced in the pancreas helps the glucose to pass to the body cells. But, pregnant women need to produce 3 times more insulin than usual because hormone from the placenta cause their insulin to be less effective. If the pancreas can't produce the insulin, the glucose will stay in the blood. When the blood glucose did not stay in a certain range, both baby and mom might be affected. Do you ever wonder who is at risk of getting GDM? The most commonly reported risk factors for GDM were older age, which is older than 35 years old. Second, pre-pregnancy obesity because pregnant mommy will gain weight when they're pregnant. Third, family history of diabetes, especially in first degree relative. And the last one is the previous history of GDM if the woman had experienced GDM before. We move on to the relationship between pancreas and gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes occurs when the woman body cannot make the extra insulin, a hormone insulin, a hormone made in pancreas, help a body use glucose for energy and help control blood glucose level. During pregnancy, a woman's body makes special hormone and goes through other changes such as weight gain. Because of these changes, women cells do not use insulin well a condition called insulin resistance. Besides, the placenta supply a growing fetus with nutrients and water and also produce a variety of hormones to maintain the pregnancy. Some of these hormones, for example, estrogen, cortisol, and human placental nitrogen can have a blocking effect on insulin. This is called the contra-insulin effect, which usually begins about 20 to 24 weeks into the pregnancy. As the placenta grows, more of these hormones are produced and the risk of insulin resistance becomes greater. Normally, the pancreas is able to make additional insulin to overcome insulin resistance. But when the production of insulin is not enough to overcome the effect of the placental hormones, gestational diabetes results. So, how do you know if you are at risk of GDM? Well, most women with GDM have no symptoms. However, a few may overt 
diabetes may experience unusual thirst, frequent urination in large amounts, fatigue and have sugar in the urine. So what effects will GDN bring? Let's move to its effects to the baby first. When the mother has GDN, her pancreas works over time to produce insulin. However, the insulin does not lower her blood glucose level. Extra blood glucose goes through the placenta, giving the baby high blood glucose levels. This causes the baby's pancreas to make extra insulin to get rid of the blood glucose. Since the baby is getting more energy than it needs to grow and develop, the extra energy is stored as fat. Because of the extra insulin made by the baby's pancreas, newborns may have very low blood glucose level at birth and are also at higher risk for breathing problems. Babies born with excess insulin become children who are at risk for obesity and adults who are at risk for type 2 diabetes. Besides, there are some effects on mother too, as GDM raises the mother's risk of high blood pressure as well as preeclampsia, which is a serious complication of pregnancy that causes high blood pressure and other symptoms that can threaten the lives of both mother and baby. Besides, if the mother has GDM, she is more likely to get it again during a future pregnancy. She will also have a higher risk of type 2 diabetes as she gets older. Last but not least, we should believe in the words prevention is better than cure. Although gestational diabetes is not always avoidable, women can take some steps to help reduce their changes of developing it. Here are some of the ways. Firstly, before getting pregnant, women need to prepare their ideal body weight from author of 2018 study, which showed 10 years of data on gestational diabetes concluded that being overweight was a significant risk factor. Other research confirmed that having a BMI higher than 25 increased their changes of getting GDM. So that do make sure to have a healthy lifestyle. This leads to my second point, which is to consume a good lifestyle during pregnancy. For example, diet changes. It will give a positive effect on blood sugar level by eating a small portion of meat and snacks. And also increase the fiber intake by eating plenty of vegetables and proteins. A simple exercise like yoga and walking could help the body to become more sensitive to the insulin that pancreas grab, which help regulate blood sugar levels eventually. Next, during pregnancy, do regular screening, especially during trimester pregnancy. There are two types of GDM screening, OGTT and GCT. Lastly, there is a vitamin called anisotol that could improve insulin resistance, thus the blood sugar levels are controlled. I think that's all from us. Thank you. Today, we would like to learn more about our topic, which is gestational diabetes, the killer of our new generation. The difference between the gestational diabetes with the common diabetes. Okay, the gestational diabetes, when we define it, we say it's any degree of glucose intolerance with onset or first recognition during pregnancy. Okay. Whereas the the usual, the common diabetes mellitus, we have two types. We have type 1 and type 2. 8 to 10 percent of all pregnancies. My question is. What is the effect of gestational diabetes to baby health and development? Recurrent miscarriages, they can have recurrent intrauterine death of the babies. Also, other, other things is that the baby can be born with abnormalities. We call it as macrosomia, right? So you have all these breathing problems, the baby might have a little bit of a mental problem. If the baby is born, fine. Later part of the life, the baby also can develop diabetes mellitus. They have problems like obesity. Take care of their diabetes. They need to take their medication. And then they need to exercise. They have to maintain a good body weight, ideal body weight. Uh, BMI should be less than 27. We have a test. We call it as OGTT. That is an oral glucose tolerance test.